Welcome back everybody to episode number three of my Bucket Plugin Development Tutorial Series. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at how enums work and what they are, and then we're going to be following on with that by using enums in arguments so that we can specify what entity we'd like to ride using just vanilla bucket methods and a bucket server. So essentially we're going to end up with a command that is like slash ride space ender dragon, and this will ride the ender dragon. But we can also do slash ride space pig and ride a pig for example. Now, I've decided that I'm going to start recording these episodes in bulk, which means that episodes will come out in more regular thick chunks so that you can have more time just dedicating to development. And I've also decided that I'm going to do that because that then means that I can put more effort into making sure there's fluency between each episode and that I know what I did in the last episode. So hopefully there should be about an episode a day for the next week or so so that you can really crack down on your development and keep learning because the key to learning is to keep on doing something, so I hope I can help you do that. Now to begin, I want to talk you through what exactly we are doing in our plugin method. Now of course, this is the code that we did in the previous episode, so you can uh, click that button on the screen there if you'd like to go back to the previous episodes and take a look at how exactly we built our plugin. But as you can see here, we're creating a new entity type dot bat, and you might not know what this actually is. What this is, is an enum, and if I open up here, this is actually the code inside spigot or bucket, and as you can see, all we have inside our enum class, apart from some methods which tell us more about the entity like the name and the type ID, we actually have an enum, and an enum is just a list of words which can represent something. So in this case we've got dropped underscore item, experience underscore orb, lease underscore hitch, painting. And if I actually go onto the web browser, you can actually see here everything that's inside this enum, a whole list of different types of entities. It's even got some descriptions for some of these. Now the good thing about an enum and why they're used is because it allows us to have more of an object orientated programming mindset. Rather than treating everything as a separate object, which it is, as you can see, we've got an object for each thing, we can store them as simply words. As you can see, a dropped item is stored as a string called item, it then contains the item class, it then contains one, and it then contains false. I'm not sure what the false actually means, but we can find out that in the future. So as you can see, this item.class is just a direct link to an item. However, because it's inside our enum, we only have to reference it by dropped underscore item. Now we've used those in bucket because rather than having to reference bat.class and find out the exact package that's in, we can just type entity type to access this enum and then find the bat string inside it. So it's a great way of storing objects and in a future tutorial, I'll show you how we can make our own enum. But for now, we're just gonna leave it like this. Now today, like I said, we're going to be looking at a thing called arguments. Arguments, they sound a bit rude, it's not like two people shouting at each other. Arguments are actually things that you provide to a plugin, just like here when I've said that inside our method we can take ride, or inside our ride we can take an entity type, entity type. An argument is just a parameter, it's just a field that you can put inside of your plugin. Now, in this case, we've already got some arguments in our onCommand method. Specifically, we've got string, square bracket, square bracket, strings. And you might wonder what this is. String, square bracket, square bracket means it's a string, but it's not just one string. These square brackets mean that it's an array of strings. It's more than one string. And so an array might be uh, several strings. It could be my name, and then your name, and then your friend's name. So because of this, we have a list of strings here. And while the default name that we got given by IntelliJ is strings, we can actually make this easier to see and call it args. Args is what this is usually called and is the best way to do it when you want to follow coding conventions. And conventions, I've spoken about those before, but conventions are just what bucket developers prefer to do. So, what we're actually going to be doing is reading these args. Now, args actually have an index. So the way these work is, just like other things in Java, they have an index and then a value. So it has an index of zero and a value of what that zero represents and then an index of one and then what that one represents. So all the indexes start at zero and work up until the highest number. So to access these, what we can actually do is go into and replace entity type with args, as you can see, square bracket, zero. And what this is gonna do is reference the zero index inside args and get the value. So that's gonna return a string of the first parameter that we place in. But what if this isn't a mob, or what if, for example, they didn't give us an argument? Well, we can fix that too. In the next scene, I'm going to show you how we can check this argument and make sure it's exactly what we're looking for.
All right, I am back. Now to do this segment, we're going to need to be using if statements. So if you're lying to me and you didn't actually watch the previous episode, or you just didn't get around to it, or in fact, it's just literally that you can't remember what we did last episode, that's fine. Head back, there'll be another link on your screen. I'm really going to regret saying that because that means I've got to follow through to here and go to the annotation section, but I promise it will either be on your screen or on the description. I am going to talk to you more about if statements, okay? So, the way we're going to do this is we're going to begin by checking if they've given us an argument. So, we're going to place an if statement. And we're actually going to place the if statement right here. So, we're going to say if args.length equals zero, if args.length equals equals zero, and then we're going to place some curly braces around this to separate it to just this method. And then we're going to place this entity.setPassenger inside of there. So what this is saying is if there aren't any arguments, then we want to spawn the entity and set the player to writing it. But what if there are arguments? Well, here's where our else statement is going to come in. We're going to place an else statement right after our is statement. And inside here, we're going to try and form the entity. Because the args.length isn't zero, we know it's at least one. So they've at least given us one argument. Now to begin, we're going to try and get the entity. We're actually going to actually tell Java that we have got it. And then we're going to check to see if it worked. So we're going to create an entity variable again, but this time it is a type of entity. We're not actually taking the entity, we're just taking the type of entity. And we're going to set this equal to something very specific. Now what this means is we're going to set a new variable called entity type, no sorry, called type, but of type entity type, equal to the entity type enum class dot the value of args, we'll go back to zero. So what this is going to do is it's going to take our string, our argument, which is at position 0, index 0, so the first argument specified, and it's going to try and find the value of it. Now what we want to do is check if it's null, so we're going to go if type equals null, and if it is null, we want to send them a message. In fact, we're just going to send them the same failure message that we send them if they're not a player. But what about if it did work? Well, now we can actually spawn the entity. All we need to do is place another else statement nested inside this. And copy in what we've done up here, but changing the entity type to just type. So now, let's read through what we've actually done. We've gone, if the args.length equals zero, if they don't tell us what entity to spawn, We'll just spawn the entity which we defined in our plugin class when we were using this constructor and set them to the passenger. Else, we're going to try and get the entity type from what they've given us. If it's null, if it's nothing, if it doesn't exist, we're going to send them a message saying failure. However, if that does work, what we're going to do is we're actually going to spawn the entity and set them to a rider. However, something you might notice is that we're actually sending them the message after we've sent them the failure message, which means we might get a failure message and then a success method. So to do this, what we're going to do is take out our success method, and we're going to paste it below each success. Perfect. So now what we have is two success lines that will only run if it's actually a success, which is absolutely brilliant. So now what we have is exactly what we wanted. Now, the next thing that we're probably going to want to do is use configurations. So in the next episode of this series, we're going to be looking at configurations and how exactly you can take this area, this entity type dot bat, and actually set that default inside a config.yml file. But that's in the next episode. So for this episode, thank you for watching. I've been Oliver vs. Creeper, but for now, goodbye.